week that you were going to do a Stuart Little 2 video and then bugger off and do a chicken run video. How did you get into my house? Chicken run is great and everything, but you've made me very angry and I want to give you a piece of my mind. <laughs> really? What are you going to do? Fight me? Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I will. <laughs> what do you think you are? An odd man. Oh, yes I am. I'm the toughest son of a bitch you'll ever meet. You'll never know what hit ya. I'm gonna beat ya to the bloomin' moon and back. Just say the word. Just say the word and I'll go for it. I'm not scared. You better prepare yourself for the punch out of a lifetime. Because when I'm through with you, they're gonna be reattaching your head for weeks to come. Oh! Oh! You sick man! Uh, James, how many people do you think are gonna get that? I don't care. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadekura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. And hey, you know what time it is? No, it's movie tie-in game day! Yay! You know what, I'm still not feeling like playing a game that's completely and utterly god-awful, so we're gonna go with something good again. Hmm. And where better to turn to, for decency, than that little company known as Ardman Animations. Ardman are unbelievable. They're one of the hardest working, most intelligently writing, funniest and impeccably detailed animation companies in the world that have created some of my favourite shorts of all time. And what's funny is that whenever I talk to people about animation and what animation companies I like, I always bring up Ardman and then they more often than not go, uh, who? And then I have to explain, oh, you know, the people that made Wallace and Gromit. And then they go, Oh yeah, I know who you mean now. I love them too. But they don't know. They're fucking liars. For those who don't pretend like they know, Ardman Animations are a UK-based animation company that specialises in plasticine animations, kind of like clay, as it were. They've made tons of mainstream stuff like the pre-mentioned Wallace and Gromit, Angry Kids, Shaun the Sheep, Morph, Creature Comforts, the Sledgehammer music video, Flushed Away and Arthur Christmas, even though those last two were computer animated. And where they were all great, I always had a more morbid curiosity with the dark side of Ardman. Throughout the 80s and 90s, these guys made some of the smartest and darkest shit I have ever seen, including Stage Fright, Ident, Pib and Pop. <laughs> Amazing. And Babylon, which has a lot of this. And a lot of this. Yeah, pretty fucked up, but incredible nonetheless. This is a company that manages to provide and entertain for every single aspect of life, from childhood to adulthood. And whatever they make, dark and mature or childish and innocent, it's all done with the same amount of creative integrity, quality and consistency with the funny writing and animation. You should go and watch as much as you can as soon as this video is over. There are YouTube videos everywhere, I don't know. Also, there's a clay penis. And you all thought that Wallace and Gromit was the edgiest this company would ever think to stray. Either way, history lesson over, there was also a PS1 movie tie-in game based around Ardman's first ever full feature-length animated movie, Chicken Run. And if you haven't seen Chicken Run yet, go and do it. It's hilarious, dark, mind-blowingly well animated, and the great escape with chickens. Can't go wrong. And what's great is that this game was developed by Blitz Games, who also made Bratz Rock Angels. James, what are you doing? Drowning myself. <laughs> okay, let's go. Chicken Run, or as I like to call it, Metal Gear Chicken. This is a kid's version of Metal Gear Solid. I'm, I'm dead serious. It isn't as difficult as Metal Gear Solid, nor as deep, nor as long, nor as life-threatening, and has a few mini-games thrown into light in the mood, but this is literally Metal Gear Solid for kids, and surprisingly solid for a movie tie-in. Let's start off by looking around the main menu hut, where Fowler says, Attack! I'm not going in there. Whatever the fuck he said, and then we begin with a cutscene straight from the movie. Yes, it's a little bit compressed, but it still looks good. Not to mention, this game was released before the DVD came out, so this was basically a legit way of owning different scenes from the movie at that time. Pretty cool stuff. So we begin the game by having to go and find two particular items and then bring them back to a specific hut in order to make some wire cutters to get through an old part of the fence, which is where the main chunk of the gameplay comes from. Chicken Run is kind of like Metal Gear Solid, mixed with a collectathon, but with chickens. Cheep, 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 cheep. 
You get given a task, go and pick up specific items in completely different locations, solve logic puzzles to find some of those pieces, bring them back to a specific hut, and then all the different tasks get trickier as they go on with more items to find and more of the farm to gain access to, either by using your imagination or by finding another item and then solving other puzzles with that item to get through. And the fact that some of the same items have different uses only makes you think a little bit more creatively. Even some of the items that you pick up for collecting purposes can be equipped, like hiding in a boot for instance. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a kid's game and it isn't exactly hard to figure out what does what, but it's great that you still have to think even though it's a kid's game. Oh, and as you unlock more of Tweedy's farm, exploring around unknown locations is highly beneficial. Not only can you find sprouts to throw and distract enemies and ripped up pieces of the farm map which are mega useful, but you can also find cool little bonus screenshots from the movie. Nothing too crazy nowadays, but remember this came out before the DVD released and when internet was stuck in the year 2000, so on those merits alone I think these were a cool addition. The presentation is also great, especially for the atmosphere and moods the game conveys. The music for each stage perfectly matches the time of day and seriousness of the situation you're in. And the the score is also pretty damn tense and brooding in some instances, especially in nighttime stages, capturing the whole 1960s POW escape movie feel perfectly. The visuals are pretty polished for PS1 standards and they can be dark and mysterious, but also bright and crack of dawn farmers are awake far too early whenever they want to be, which in both instances enhances the feeling of mysterious exploration for the collecting and life-threatening escapism for the stealth. I also quite like the lighting effects, pretty good for a year 2000 movie tie-in PS1 game. Additionally, the little things, like your heartbeat increasing in tempo whenever faced with a threat, adds to the overall charm of the game. Okay, just gotta make sure Babs doesn't mind helping me with the wire cutters. Do you need this in here, Babs? No, sorry, Ginger. I don't know where that goes. Well, funnily enough, I'll tell you where that knife goes. It actually just about slips perfectly into your juicy chicken tits. Breasts. I meant breasts. Actually, no, I didn't. Wrong hut! Okay, back to Mac I go then. Presto! Wire cutters. They look great. I hope they'll be strong enough. I'm sure they will be. Right, I've got the wire cutters, so let's cut our way through the fence and continue our journey through the- Oh, balls! A spotlight! Get away! Get away! Hide! I'm safe in here. I'm sure of it. Ugh, Mr. Tweedy, get back, go, away with you. For king and country and all sprouts who sacrifice their lives to be eaten by dogs and fat men alike. Yeah, there is also a high focus of stealth in this game, hence all of my Metal Gear Solid mentions. You have to basically solve the puzzles and collect all the items without getting caught, which like I said, isn't too difficult, but for kids, the balance is pretty damn good. You can throw sprouts to distract enemies, stand behind cover and peek around, hide in boxes, sneak around quietly and run around like a chicken with its head still intact. The Tweedies and their dogs are all bigger and faster than you and getting caught only once makes you lose a random item and start you from your last area point, which is honestly a great incentive to stay out of sight. It isn't as dispiriting as losing lives or getting game overs, yet it still punishes you by taking away that one item that you worked your ass off to grab, and for a game about collecting stuff, I can't think of any better punishment to get your heart racing in specific stealth sections. You also have a radar in the bottom corner which acts as your radar. You can see where items are placed, see the vision cone of any enemies, and the thing itself actually beeps the closer you get to an item, a very cute touch as far as I'm concerned and it makes grabbing the item feel more rewarding as a result. It also goes red when you're in alert and stays green when you're okay. Simple to understand and effective. Well, how about that? Ah, uh, yes. Haven't seen this problem in a while. Yeah, these kind of things tend to happen when your PS1 disc has a scratch, 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 scratch. I got you. Didn't I? Not to mention, when I was little, getting caught in this game actually terrified me. Well, I mean, first, tell me that being stalked by that thing isn't scary, but something about a dog closing in on you and then catching you with the screen going black and the dog staring right at you with this horrible music probably freaked me out when I was younger. Okay, grabbed some boots from the back door, and Mrs. Tweedy seems completely content to just walk indoors and outdoors all day, saying the exact same thing over and over again. I'm tired of making minuscule profits. Oh shit, I'm on alert. Get up here, get up here, get a hit. Yes! Oh god. Ha ha ha! You can't catch me, you can't catch me! Oh damn, Mr. Tweedy's on his way. What do I do? What do I do now? Uh, oh wait. Are you serious? That fat, miserable fuck can't even bring himself to climb those stairs. He was just like, oh, don't worry, boy, I'll go and catch this intruder who's potentially a threat to my life. Oh, wait, 
Stairs. Oh, I can't get up them. He'll have to come down here. However, unlike MGS, you are being stalked mostly by dogs, and dogs are a little more insane than armed guards in the sense that whenever you stand on anything loud or stand in any kind of light, they will hear you and hunt you down and try to get you. You're either hidden or you're an alert. There's no in-between in this game. The dogs are faster than you as well, so your best bet is to play this game safely and stealthily. Wow, it feels like I'm playing Sly all over again. Sly. Ah, oh, yes, oh, completely forgot. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, it turns out that c is actually the worst curse word available for European regions. That's why we ended up getting Sly Raccoon instead of Sly c and the Thievius Raccoonus. So I found some parts of a disguise for Babs to knit, so let's go and tell her what the plan is. At last, we'll be able to escape from this farm. Should we tell the Tweedies in case they wonder where we are? Of course not, Babs. It has got to be done in secret. In secret? What fun! But will we tell the other chickens? We are dead, aren't we? Okay, now we're walking around in a tall disguise, being chased by dogs, rescuing more chickens, and flapping our arms around like brutal moose in order to keep our balance. It's pretty fun, actually, not to mention kind of ridiculous. This is one of three act finales in the game, because you see, the point of this game is that it's split into three different acts, and each act represents a different escape plan that you have to help the chickens accomplish. The first act ends with the Tweedy disguise, the second act ends with Ginger getting captured and stuck into a pie machine, which you have to platform your way around to get out of, with, by the way, some of the catchiest music you will ever hear in your life. And the third and final act finale is escaping in a homemade plane while you have to smack Mrs. Tweedy into billboards and windmills. This is ridiculous, yes. But I suppose if people can make a game about... Barbie... I suppose the notion of a game about runaway chickens isn't too far-fetched. Because far-fetched is a fucking bird, and that joke was amazing. Okay, running around here, searching for some stuff, going to this barn, and oh shit, what's going on? Kazoos! Kazoos are never a good thing in a game like this. Oh god, I'm force-feeding chickens so that they shit out eggs to catch into a basket. What is this? Postal Poultry Edition. Yes, it turns out that there are also a handful of mini games in this package. Oh joy. Some are actually pretty fun, but they mostly make no sense. I mean, for instance, you're going around picking up parts to build contraptions to save your fellow chickens. And then when it comes to actually saving them, you are ranked on how many you save in a certain time limit before the Tweedies come back. And you don't pass the mini game if you don't save enough chickens. Uh, shouldn't the fact that I'm actually saving chickens be enough of a success? You... You... Trump nugget? Other than that though, the variety is pretty great. You have a chicken fireworks shooting gallery, two drunk as lord chickens holding a springy mattress that you have to aim and to bounce on and get over, the same kind of concept but in a lake, dunk chicken, drown chicken, hell for chicken, and then some rhythm games, and even tap the fuck out of the button games which require you to multitask by catching other things while doing other things like force feeding chickens until they literally pass through an entire egg out of sheer full stomach. Gross. To add to the variety, you also get to play as other characters from the movie, including the thieving rats Nick and Fetcher, who base their entire gameplay around logic puzzles that require switching back and forth between them and doing different things at different times. And you get to play as Rocky, who is exactly the same as Ginger, except he's voiced by... Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you've been a wonderful audience. <laughs> is that supposed to be Mel Gibson? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you've been a wonderful audience. My word, the man who wanted no relation to the Chicken Run video game starred in a movie where aliens were scared of wooden doors. Go figure. And so, in conclusion, despite being made by the same people that made brats the splashy rats that are gnats covered in shats, Chicken Run gets the salvage. Yeah. Basically, I suppose I can sum this entire game up by saying it's Metal Gear Solid, but for a younger crowd, and it's based off of a really, really good movie. So it's it's a solid game, and it's surprising. I mean, how often do you find a good movie tie-in game? It doesn't really happen. So it's a surprise. It's a solid surprise, and you can't go wrong with kids' version of Metal Gear Solid, can you? So. As always, if it is your birthday today or watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you. And please remember to stay beautiful. I'm a chicken. Buck. Buck. Bucka. Ay, 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 ay,
Hello there everybody and thanks so much for watching my stupid video on the PS1 version of Chicken Run. If you like this video then please hit that little like button and consider subscribing to my channel because I upload two videos every single week unless I'm ill or on holiday so that's always good. And if you look in the description you'll find my social media links, Facebook, Twitter, my Twitch page because I'm doing a lot more streaming nowadays so you can always have a look at that to see me go live and you'll also see my Game Scrabber collection where if you want to see what games I've been buying, what games are on my shelves, all of that kind of stuff, what I'm playing, what I'm picking up and what you can buy yourself from my collection, you can go in the description and have a look at that and start following me if you'd like to. And I'd also like to give a huge thank you and a huge shout out to my top I'm Raising supporter this week, Martin Holzell. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but thank you so, 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 so much. And like always, if it's your birthday today watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you and please remember to stay beautiful.